We're now looking at the anterior aspect of the shoulder and we have our subject in the anatomical position. We'll start with um, the sternoclavicular joint. So we start in the midline and look for the sternal notch. The sternal notch is in the midline and it's a bit tender so we're not going to push and prod too much in that position. And then we want to follow the actual line of the clavicle. So just feeling very gently and we can see that the line of clavicle starts from here. And we're going to follow the clavicle around um, just by walking our fingers again. So we're comfortable that it goes in a reasonably straight line to there. And then it starts to move posteriorly until and we're looking for the um, acromial end, so the acromioclavicular joint. So the, uh, you can see the acromion under the surface of the skin. If we fix the skin and move the skin around, we can see the acromion. And this is the acromial end of the clavicle. So we're happy that we've got to the end there. And the chromium carries on to the point of the shoulder, at this point here. So we're happy we've got the, uh, the clavicle drawn in. We're now going to look at the other structures that we can see. Uh, about there's a midpoint between the medial and lateral end, and that's called the um, midclavicular line. Now, if we go slightly lateral to the midclavicular line, under the clavicle, we should be able to feel the coracoid process of the scapula. So we're looking to feel that coracoid process. So just very carefully, looking for something that sticks out. Coracoid means crow-like or beak-like um, from the beak of a crow. So we're looking for something that sticks out like the end of a finger. So I'm quite comfortable I've felt it. It's a very definite... There's a definite circular prominence at that point there. So we've got the coracoid process. Now the coracoid process is actually about one centimetre medial to the joint space of the um, shoulder, so to the glenohumeral joint space. So we can actually draw, draw in the glenohumeral joint space at that point. If we come more lateral to this, then we'll actually get some more bony points which are actually on the humerus. So if we move a little bit lateral, there's another bony prominence we can feel quite comfortably there. And that is on the humeral head. And we can tell that it's on the humeral head because if we feel it and ask our subject to move their um, arm, rotate their arm internally, then it disappears. And if we move back again, it reappears. So this is difficult for you to see on the video, but in actual fact, this is the uh, lesser tuberosity of the head of humerus. And as our um, subject internally and externally rotates their shoulder, this will move in medial and lateral. So internal rotation will move it medial, external rotation will move it lateral. If we come a bit more uh, lateral still, then we get a slightly larger bony prominence, and that's the greater, tu greater tuberosity. And in between these two tuberosities, we have the what's called the bicipital groove, or the intertubercular sulcus. And this is uh, where the tendon of the long head of the biceps actually runs and attaches to the glenoid. So we've got this tendon of the biceps muscle going between these two bony points. So I'll just draw the acromion on here. And we now have a good 
condition of the shoulder.